This is Composition 102, uh, and this is just about guidelines to follow. These aren't actually principles of design. These are conventions. So these are some ways that people use guidelines to make strong images. The first one is the rule of thirds. You've probably seen this before if you've ever used a crop tool in Photoshop or Pixlr. If I take an image like this, this is a lighthouse, and I apply the rule of thirds over top of it, you'll see that the two points of interest are in the upper right hand corner and the lower left hand corner. So that's to say if I take the image and I split it into thirds, and this is approximately thirds actually, it might be off just by a little bit, and then I do the same thing vertically, I split the image into thirds, so three equal sections, where those seams lie, the convergence here, or the corners of those, should have some sort of image in them, some point of interest. So this picture of a snail lies roughly in this upper third quadrant. That's the rule of thirds. Another convention is to have some element disappear into the corners. Here are a few examples. This railroad, you can see it disappears into the lower left corner and approximately to the upper right corner. Same thing with the bridge, the arm of the bridge and this roadway disappears to the lower left hand and upper right hand corners. Another one that's really similar is S-curves. I know that you're not going to go out and photograph mountains in the next couple days, but you can find stuff that reminds you of this here on campus. Or perhaps at home out in the country. You can see this S-curve. This is more like a Z-curve or a zigzag, but the idea is that something meanders back and forth across the composition. Monotonous content is another convention that works pretty well when you have lots of unity. So we talked about monotonous content and unity in the last lecture. Same here, these gourds are all different. They're all wildly different from one another. But the fact is that they're all roughly the same size and there's so many of them that it almost kind of works the opposite having so much variety actually creates a sense of unity and it becomes monotonous. Monotonous sometimes is a um, pejorative term, it's a negative term, but in this case it actually works pretty well. Same here. All these fish are roughly the same. Another convention is to place move, moving or the idea of moving objects in the majority of the composition. So right up in the front. So in this case, this guy, I mean, it's not the most interesting picture in the world, but you know, you're going to be photographing or maybe have already photographed the uh, traffic. You, you don't want to have it too zoomed out. You want to be zoomed right in on that moving object. It makes it seem like it's moving more, the closer it is to the front of the picture plane, right up against the front. Now in this case, the elephants, there's two of them. They're obviously moving right to left. If they were kind of pushed back and we were zoomed out, they wouldn't have the same authority, visual authority, as they have here in this picture. Another great convention is the use of layers to create depth and space. So in this image here, looking down a ski slope, you could probably identify about five to six different layers of space. And I used a graphic here to kind of communicate that a little bit more clearly. So we have the ski slope layer. And then just behind that are some trees. Just behind that is the mountain, water, and then that little peninsula that's over there. Take a look at this image and you'll see the use of layers. Here are some student examples where students went out and photographed their principles of design. They tried to 
visually communicate their principles of design, but they also employed some of these conventions. So what they did was they went out and they said, I'm trying to maybe communicate something about repetition, but also about emphasis. So they've placed this shoe, in, um, which is kind of the bit of variety in this image, but then they also used S-curves and disappear into corners. So you can see that these elements and principles of design and these conventions that I've just talked to you about don't act independently of one another. They actually all work together. Um, so in some cases like this, there's several layers of um, the use of these principles and conventions of two-dimensional design and composition. But here in this image, this is their photography of uh, moving objects, the traffic example. They didn't place it in the majority of the frame, but they, what they were also trying to communicate was um, a bit of contrast. So they were trying to contrast this static object against these moving objects, um, and therefore created a point of emphasis in the lower right-hand corner. This is repetition to create movement, and they've also used the disappear into corners convention. And then here, the same thing, repetition, approximate symmetrical balance, and monotonous content. Lastly, S-curves. I love this example. This is taken here on East Campus at UNL, and this is in a sort of a low perspective and so they were able to find S-curves, repetition and movement on the same image.